I am Rosas, your tour guide with my spaceship. Wow! Boom! Come on, let's go. We've got a mission to do to explore the anatomy of the urinary tract system. The urinary system is also called the renal system or urinary tract that removes waste from your blood in the form of urine. Your urinary system prevents waste and toxins from building up in your blood and it also helps regulate your blood pressure, maintains your body's water balance, helps keep bones strong and healthy, controls the level of chemicals and salts in your body and helps make your body's red blood cells. And lastly, there are four main parts of urinary system which is made up of kidney, organs that filter blood to make urine. The functions of kidney are for plasma filtration, excretion of waste production, acid basomeostasis with the help of nephra. It is a bean-shaped paired organ on the backside within the ribs. The right kidney is placed lower than the left kidney because the liver occupies the space of the right abdominal cavity. It extends from the T12 to L3 vertebra. Thus, they receive protection from the lower part of the ribcage. It has the mass of 120 to 200 grams. An adult kidney is about 10 to 12 cm long, 5 to 6 cm wide, and 3 cm thick. And when you cut open the kidneys, we will see its internal structure. The kidneys have a compartment within called the sinus renalis or the renal sinus. It is filled up by fat called renal sinus fat. Between the fat, you will find the renal pelvis and renal calyxes, which lead to urine from the kidneys down to the ureter. The kidneys consist of the renal medulla and the renal cortex. Renal cortex is a dark brown color soft and granule in consistency. The main functional unit of the kidney are nephrons. There are 1 to 1.5 million nephrons, and if it is divided into two, the parts of it lie in the cortex and medulla, and the rest of the nephron is in the medulla. Renal medulla. It is consists of renal pyramids. There are 7 to 18 within one kidney, and these pyramidal structures with the adjacent cortex will form lobes called renal lobes. It has base of renal pyramid and apex of the renal pyramid, and it will fuse together to form renal papilla. The urine will flow into the renal pelvis down towards the ureter. Renal cortex and renal column is between the renal pyramids, and below it, there are minor renal calyces. Nephron consists of renal corpuscle that consists of glomerulus with many capillary loops located in renal cortex and flow through an afferent arteriole to arrive at glomerulus and exit as afferent arteriole. It consists of internal part and external part that between it is tubular system where the urine flows. Proximal convoluted tube which also lies in cortex that has convoluted part which curves and nephron flow to loop of henna. 
that has descending part and ascending part which extends up the renal cortex as distal convoluted tube. Lastly, plasma has been filtrated into primary urine and reabsorbed and secreted to urine and continue through collecting duct, fuse, and form papillary duct will open a small opening to the minor renal calcis. Ureters are tubes connecting your kidneys to your bladder. Each ureter runs behind the peritoneum from the renal halo to the posterior aspect of the bladder, which it enters at a slight angle. The ureters are two slender tubes, each 25 to 30 cm long and 6 mm in diameter. Essentially, the ureters are passageways that carries urine from the kidneys to the bladder. Through contraction of the smooth muscle layers in their walls that propel urine into the bladder by peristalsis and is prevented from flowing back by small valve-like folds of bladder because of that flap over the ureter openings. From the renal pelvis, ureter is a muscular tube that moves urine through peristaltic movement. The courses of the ureter, it enters lesser pelvis and crosses structures. In male, it crosses ductus deferens, while in female, it passes between broas ligament of the uterus and cardinal ligament of the uterus. Also, it opens up as a ureteric orifice. Bladder, an organ for storing urine. It is located between peritoneally in the pelvis just posterior to the symphysis pubis. The tetrasural muscles and the transitional epithelium both make the bladder uniquely suited for its function of urine storage. The sac usually stores 250 up to 500 ml of urine which depends on the capacity of a person. We can also find the median umbilical ligament in the middle part of the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is divided into three parts. First, the closest in the median umbilical ligament is the apex of the bladder. Next. The majority, which is the body of the bladder. Then, posteriorly, you will find the fundus of the urinary bladder. There are two general conditions that the bladder can be in. First, the empty urinary bladder. It is situated behind pubic symphysis and has anterior surface toward the pubic symphysis and posterior surface toward the peritoneum. Full urinary bladder. Oval shape when full and it lies above the pubic symphysis. This shows that the urinary bladder isn't always going to be located behind the pubic symphysis. Internal structure of the urinary bladder. The right ureteric orifice and the left ureteric orifice can be seen in the opening of the ureters. The internal urethral orifice can be found on the opening of the urethra. Then these three orifices are going to form a triangle called the trigon of the bladder. Lastly, there will be a fold between the two openings of the ureters called interureteric crest. The male urinary system consists of four parts, the urinary bladder, prostate, perineum, and the penis. Urethra is the tube coming from the urinary bladder that goes with the penis. Let's now go through each of these parts. We'll start with the prostatic urethra by looking at the posterior aspect. It starts in the internal urethral orifice and ends in the external urethral orifice. The whole urethra is about 17 to 22 centimeters long and 5 to 7 millimeters in diameter and it has three parts. The part inside the prostate is called the prostatic urethra, which is about 3 cm long. And inside the part of the perineum, which is called the membranous urethra, which is roughly about 1.5 to 2 cm long. And then we have the spongy urethra, which is about 15 cm long, lying between the spongy parts of the penis. The ridge called the urethral crest, which is an elevated crest on the posterior surface of the urethra. And in the middle part, there is an elevation formed by the mucous membrane called the seminal colliculus, which is a remnant of the paramesopheric duct during development, which is now just a depressed fossa on the seminal colliculus, and then on either side of them, there are the openings for the ejaculatory ducts 
coming from the testes that secretes out the sperma into the urethra. Then on the sides, there are many small openings for the prostatic secretion called the prostatic ductals. In this part, it is completely surrounded by a spincher called the external urethral spincher. The last part, we have the spongy urethra. This part extends from the membranous urethra all the way to the external urethral orifice. The whole spongy urethra is located inside the body of the penis except the upper part which is directly below the perineum. And this part is surrounded only by connective tissues. And at the region of the bulb of the penis, the duct of the bulbo-urethral gland is going to open up, secreting the liquid for the sperm. And so, the male urethra has three narrowings and three enlargements. The first narrowing is the internal urethral orifice. The second one is the external urethral orifice. And the last one is a narrowing at the membranous urethra. The enlargements, however, are the prostatic urethra. There is an enlargement at the region of the bulb of the penis, and then the third enlargement is at the navicular fossa. Now, lastly, let's look at the walls of the urethra. We have the tunica mucosa on the inside, which contains urethral lacunae, at which the urethral glands open up lubricating the surface and there here in navicular fossa the mucus fold forms a valve called valve of the navicular fossa as you see right here it's literally a valve that prevents the backflow of urine so that was the tunica mucosa the next layer is a is is the The next layer is the tunica muscularis, which is a muscle layer which forms spinchers. These are the internal urethral spincher. And, the, and while the external one is made up of perineum, which are skeletal muscle fibers, meaning the spincher with skeletal fibers are voluntary spincher. Female urethra. The bladder is here and the vaginal opening is here. So, the female urethra is a short tube which measures around 2.5 to 4 centimeters long and about 8 to 12 millimeters in diameter. It is much shorter than the male's urethra but larger in diameter, which is why female urethra may be prone to leakage of urine more than the male urethra. In internal urethral orifice at the urinary bladder, and an external urethral orifice, which lies roughly about 2 cm behind the glands clitoris, peeking out from the female genitalia. Let's now look at the walls of the urethra that are more or less going to look similar to the male's urethra. Tunica mucosa with small openings called urethral lacuna, which the urethral glands open up, lubricating the surfaces. A tunica muscularis, which forms two spinsters. The internal urethra spinster lies at the border between the bladder and the urethra. Lastly, the external urethral spinster at the perineum of the female. Can someone please summarize the anatomy of urinary system? Mama, ako ma'am. Ma'am, gusto ko. Ako. Ma'am, Rosa, sa ako. Ako, ako. ma'am. Ako. Kaya yung dalawa na lang.
kidneys filter blood at the top of the urinary system. The kidneys are pin-shaped organs situated on the top of the abdominal wall, behind the peritoneum. The right kidney sits slightly lower than the left to accommodate the liver. The kidneys filter blood, which is supplied by the renal arteries to remove unwanted substances. They also secrete waste into urine. The ureters move the urine from the kidney to the bladder. Urine drains from the renal pelvis of each kidney into the ureters. The ureters are long, thin tubes made of smooth muscle. Contractions of the smooth muscle push urine down through the ureters and into the bladder. The urinary bladder is a reservoir for urine. Urine flows through the ureters into the urinary bladder. In women, the bladder is located in front of the vagina and below the uterus. In men, the bladder sits in front of the rectum and above the prostate gland. The wall of the bladder contains folds called rugae and a layer of smooth muscle called the trusor muscle. As urine fills the bladder, the rugae is moved out to accommodate the volume. The detrusor relaxes to hold the urine, then contracts for urination. An adult bladder is full at about half a liter. The female urethra is shorter than in males. Urine produced in the kidney passes through the ureters, collects in the bladder, and is then excreted from the urethra. In females, the urethra is narrow and is about 4 cm long. It is significantly shorter than in males. It extends from the bladder leg to the external urethral orifice in the vestibule of the vagina. Remember that in males, the urethra is about 17.5 to 2 cm long, 4 or 5 times as long as in females. The male urethra is divided into three sections. The first one is the prostatic urethra, the widest portion. The next one is the membranous urethra, the narrowest portion. And lastly, the spongy urethra, the longest portion.